DC, we need to talk. Just sit down for a second and let's discuss what happened. How did we get here? So at long last, Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice has finally arrived, the follow up to Man of Steel and the first time ever we get to see both the Dark Knight and the Man of Steel in a live action movie together. So the movie opens up with the finale of Man of Steel, except this time it's from the perspective of Bruce Wayne, who was in Metropolis at the time shit was happening. Bruce Wayne decides that, you know what? This Superman is a menace. He could be a danger to us all, and I gotta take him out. And somewhere in the middle, you have Lex Luthor planning some things, you have Wonder Woman caught in the mix, and, you know, to be honest, for a movie that's called Batman vs. Superman, this plot really is a little more complicated than it should be. So there's a lot of things being tossed around with this movie, and it's mostly negative. It's mostly saying how bad this movie is. Zack Snyder ruined the future for the DC Extended Universe. He should be fired from Justice League. And basically DC's in trouble when it comes to their movies. And I gotta say, I'm in that camp. Well, I don't hate this movie. The only thing that keeps me from really hating this movie is because I kind of expected it to be bad. But I really didn't want it to be bad. I was really pushing for this movie to succeed. Because I want the DC Extended Universe to be as awesome as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I wanted to see this other group of heroes come to life and basically form the Justice League. I was excited. But now, because of Batman vs. Superman, I don't think I have any hope. It's just, it's depressing. But let's talk about the good. Because... I'll tell you right now, this is not the worst superhero movie I've seen. It's not anywhere near as bad as last year's Fantastic Four. It's not as bad as X-Men Origins Wolverine. It's not as bad as Batman and Robin or Superman for the Quest for Peace. Because there are really good things about it. And let's jump into the one everyone's talking about, which is Ben Affleck as Batman. He steals the whole show in this movie. Every time he is on screen, he really does a great job. And in my opinion, he is the best live-action Batman we have gotten. Like, the suit looks great, the fighting style is awesome, his tactics are well thought out for this comic book kind of world. And one thing that I don't hear a lot of other people saying that I think is a plus for Affleck is that he is the first Batman since Michael Keaton to smile and still look intimidating. Now, some people will have a problem with the fact that Batman has abandoned his no-kill policy. And... In my eyes, I think it's better when Batman doesn't kill people because it shows how morally strong he is. However, if you were to look back at some of the movies, um, he's killed some people. Like, if you look at The Dark Knight, there is clearly a point when his Batmobile crushes the driver of a dump truck. And it's just like, yeah, you, you killed that guy, Batman. There's no getting around that. You flattened him. So I don't have a big problem with Batman just murdering people here and there. And I really don't think he kills as much as people are saying he is. I mean, there are dream sequences where he kills a lot in this movie, but in the non-dream sequences, I don't think it's really that much. Maybe like two people. But bottom line, Ben Affleck is a really great Batman, and he also nails Bruce Wayne. Since this Bruce Wayne's a lot older and more seasoned as Batman, he's learned to balance the Batman life with the billionaire playboy life without having the Bruce Wayne side actually be an act. He embraces it, and it was really cool. One of the biggest worries I had about this movie was Wonder Woman, played by Gal Gadot, who people mainly know from the Fast and the Furious movies, and she really isn't that great of an actress in those movies. But... I thought she was pretty good as Wonder Woman for the little bit that we saw. Because really, there doesn't seem to be much of a point to have Wonder Woman in this movie. I mean, I was glad to see her, and the costume looks great, and the way she fights is pretty cool. But she's not in the movie long enough to really be deserving of being in it. <laughs> and also, the supposed theme she has from Hans Zimmer is terrible. It is an awful theme, and I hope it's not used in the Wonder Woman solo movie. Not getting into the bad stuff. I want to keep talking about the good. The opening I thought was really great. I wasn't a big fan of Man of Steel, but I thought it was really neat to see the finale told from the perspective of 
the ground. Uh, like, we see Bruce Wayne's perspective of this whole finale, and I thought it was pretty cool. And a lot of the action scenes, especially the ones with Batman, are fun to watch. Like I said, this is the Batman fighting style that I've been waiting for. He's brutal, you can tell Zack Snyder was inspired by the Arkham games for this fighting style, and it is really fun to watch. And the big battle that we've been waiting for between Batman and Superman, it's cool. For the little bit you get. And unfortunately, the battle is very hollow. It's not as brutal as I thought it was going to be. It's actually kind of a letdown. And I've heard people say, oh, the battle between Batman and Superman is excellent. And I'm like, did we see a different movie? Because this battle was actually relatively short and it's kind of hollow. There's really nothing about it that makes me root for either side it's just okay it's cool to see these two fight but it doesn't mean anything and this would be the perfect transition into what i didn't like about the movie this story is a giant mess as i've said before with a movie that's named batman versus superman you would expect it to be very straightforward but no there's a lot of shit going on and it's a mess it's two and a half hours long but it feels so padded out so slow, so boring, and the editing is awful. There are completely random scene transitions. There are some scenes that you don't even know what's happening, you don't even know where you are. It's just such a poorly edited movie. Probably one of the worst edited movies I've seen in a long time. And to make it things even more confusing, this movie has several dream sequences, which, okay, Hollywood, We've gotten past the point of dream sequences. You need to cut it out. To quote the late, great Gene Siskel when he and Roger Ebert reviewed Jaws The Revenge, I can't stand the dream sequences. Why do they do that? If there's anything that annoys an audience more, it's the dream sequences. And really, if you cut those dream sequences out, you would not have missed anything. And plus, a lot of those dream sequences are just more of a build-up to the inevitable Justice League movie that's coming out. Which that in itself is annoying. There is literally a scene in this movie where they stop. They just stop the plot just so they can go, Oh look, here's the Flash. Look, here's Aquaman. Look, here's Cyborg. Look, here's a photo of Wonder Woman back during the days of World War I. Isn't it exciting? And I'm like... Yeah, but you just showed us all this in the most cliched and uninspired way possible. Now, a lot of the actors do a fine job. I think the two standouts for me... No, no, three. Um, there's three. Uh, there's Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne slash Batman. There's Gal Gadot as Diana Prince slash Wonder Woman. And then there's Alfred, who's played by Jeremy Irons. I thought he was really good. But everyone else was just fine. And then you have Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Hmm. Bruce Wayne meets Clark Kent. Ah, I love it. I love bringing people together. How are we? Lex. Hi, hello. Lex, it is a pleasure. Ow, wow, that is a good grip. You should not pick a fight with this person. For the longest time since they announced his casting, I thought, no, there is no way Jesse Eisenberg can work as Lex Luthor. No, I don't buy it. I can't see it. I don't care how good of an actor Jesse Eisenberg is, which he is. If you watch The Social Network, that's definitely proof, but... There's no way he can pull off Lex Luthor. And sure enough, yeah, he sucks as Lex Luthor. And I understand that this is supposed to be Lex Luthor Jr., that his dad is the original Lex Luthor, the one we're all familiar with, but this is the version of Lex Luthor we're getting in the DC Extended Universe, and I can't stand him. He twitches throughout a lot of the movie, he's Weasley, he's annoying, and he never truly embodies the spirit of the character, which Lex Luthor is pretty much like Donald Trump, except smart and even more evil than Donald Trump, although Trump is really evil. That not get not getting into that, but Jesse Eisenberg never once made me scared of Lex Luthor at all. And then Henry Cavell as Superman. <sighs> he sucks in this movie. He is actually terrible as Superman here. Which, I think that's more of a problem with Zack Snyder's direction. In Man of Steel, even though I didn't like the movie that much, there were a few select moments where I looked at Henry Cavell and I'm like, you know what? That is Superman. There are certain parts in that movie where I'm like, this guy is the Superman that I remember, and I like him. Here, we get none of that. Superman not once smiles. He's boring, lifeless, and uncharismatic throughout the whole movie. Martin Thomas from Double Toasted said that 
this movie was made by people who don't understand Superman, nor do they like Superman. And after watching it, I'm like, wow, you hit the nail on the head, Mr. Thomas, because Zack Snyder really wanted to make a Batman movie more than a Batman vs. Superman movie because Superman is completely pretty much tossed aside and Zack Snyder just doesn't really seem to care about Superman in the slightest, which that's an American icon. Superman might not be the most interesting superhero out there, but he's still an iconic character. You have to respect him. But no, no respect is given to Superman this time around and the finale of the movie with Doomsday. <laughs> You've all seen the trailer, you've heard me talk about it in one of my Battlefront Let's Plays. It's a total mess. It's as bad as you expect it to be. And there is something that happens in the end that I really won't get into. So I'm going to save that for my spoiler-filled review, which I'll be putting up in the next couple days or next week. But it's a total mess. And really... I, okay, you know what, I'm going to wrap things up right here. Batman vs. Superman was supposed to be an event film. Huh? When you look at it, you're thinking, oh my god, this is going to be so awesome. This is going to be an event film on the level of the Avengers and Star Wars The Force Awakens. It's going to be amazing! And then you watch the movie and you're like, oh, no, this is an event film on the level of The Phantom Menace. Huh? Where it has really good moments in it, huh? but the bad stuff is so bad that the good moments can't really save the whole movie. So... I can't say I hate this movie, because I did kind of expect it to be bad, but it is such a disappointment, and it hurts. I'm with you guys. I wanted to love this movie. I really wanted to love this movie, but I can't. But you know what? If you saw some enjoyment in this movie, more power to you. But really, we deserve better than this. We deserve a truly great DC film, and I don't think we've had a really good one since The Dark Knight in 2008, so I'm gonna say this movie is something you need to watch at your own risk. If you want to see this movie, go for it and make your own judgment. If you looked at the trailers and go, ugh, I don't think I want to see this, then just stay away from it. It's not gonna change your opinion, and if you go see it with a bad attitude, then you just kind of wasted your time. So. Again, I don't hate the movie, and it's not even among the worst superhero movies out there, but it is probably the most disappointing superhero movie out there. And that's my review for Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I can't wait to hear what you guys think about the movie, if and when you see it. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out my official website. And you can go follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, Periscope, and Rift.tv. Don't forget, the Indiegogo campaign for a faithful companion is still ongoing. Go donate, check it out, share with your friends. They need your help in funding this fan film. And this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one.